For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. When I went to Bosnia to take these pictures in 1995, my co-workers presented me with a cake. It said, May you survive your homeland. Of course, my friends at work knew I didn't have the slightest ethnic link to Yugoslavia, but the cake may have borne more truth than any of us would wish. They were referring to the degree of obsession that I had developed over the war, but as my real homeland of America becomes more and more like Yugoslavia every week, I start to feel like Yugoslavia really is my homeland. The most troubling similarity is between America and the former Yugoslav Republic of Serbia. In 1995, the Clinton administration went to war basically to stop Serbians from bombing Muslims. I uh, did the same thing again in 1999. But immediately after the 10-year Yugoslav wars, the situation started to, to go full circle. Now it completely is full circle with Americans uh, bombing Muslims en masse all over the world. Hundreds of thousands of deaths, most of them non-combatants, doing just what it didn't want the Serbians doing. And while Americans have been out doing this, most of the Serbians have been doing absolutely no killing of Muslims. Sometimes I think these days Americans are acting on the world stage almost exactly the way that Serbians acted on the Yugoslavian stage just 15 years ago. Never in my craziest dreams would I have thought that we would be here today. <clears throat> now, the second similarity that America has to Yugoslavia is uh, what I would call an ethnic similarity. And <clears throat> it's almost more like the situation in Bosnia is almost better to compare to the U.S. than the situation in Yugoslavia as a whole, when you think in ethnic terms. Uh, Yugoslavia was widely multi-ethnic, well, multi but Bosnia itself was dominated by three large ethnic groups. Uh, Bosniaks, uh, also known as Muslims, uh, ethnic Serbs, ethnic Croats. They were all Bosnian nationals, but they were ethnically these things. And they were very integrated, uh, uh, a little bit more integrated than I would say Americans are. I mean, you think about the three major ethnic groups in America, black folks, uh, Hispanic folks, and uh, Caucasians. Rates of intermarriage over there were, I would say, around 20%, which I think is comparable to what it is here. Uh, the level of tension over there before the war uh, was roughly comparable to what it is here. Uh, it wasn't particularly violent there until the war started. Uh, the government <clears throat> that they had in Yugoslavia was pretty similar to the one we have in the U.S. There had been a lot of rapid changes in the 1980s uh, with the fall of communism, but you still had this sort of um, pro-multi-ethnic, yet relatively oppressive government, central government, with its own brand of sort of soft communism, kind of like we have in the U.S. It does the same kinds of things uh, that the American government does in the sense of incredibly heavy spending uh, inflationary type policies, ugly socialist realism type structures, gray compounds, uh, overbuilding, urban decay, all underneath a veneer of pleasant, well-developed civic culture. But long suppressed uh, bigotry is starting to show through the shell. Uh, I'm talking about ethnic bigotry and nationalism. Well, you see that latter in the U.S. Uh, 
too, uh, in the sense that j just as uh, Yugoslavia was starting to develop a free press, and that free press was, you know, giving a microphone to the ethnic bigots, in the same way in the U.S. we're starting to develop a free press in the form of, the, you know, the, ma the maturing Internet, and it's uh, formidable press institutions that are starting to rise up there. The fact that individuals can almost be the press by themselves if they want. Well, now you, there you see. If anybody's got a Facebook page, you're seeing more and more chatter on your Facebook page. If you're anything like me, you're seeing more and more chatter on your Facebook page that contains the kind of language you never would have heard in the 80s or the 90s. Uh, there's one guy in Manchester that I, or I don't know, Manchester, but in New Hampshire, I'm subscribed to him. He's some kind of talk show host. And the kind of ethnic hatred, vitriol, it's more like a religious hatred towards Muslims. The kind of vitriol that guy spews is exactly the kind of thing you would have heard someone like the genocider Radovan Karadzic say uh, before he started slaughtering uh, Muslims in 1992. Uh, yeah, you see the black-white divide, uh, you know, look crankier than it used to look when you watch your Facebook page. Now, some of this is just a product of more freedom of speech, in a sense, uh, but uh, it's still just heartbreaking to see the similarities. And, and I'm not really an expert on exactly what Yugoslavia looked and felt like in the 80s, because I didn't get there until 1992. But, uh, you know, I certainly closely watched the documentaries about what happened before I got there, and, uh, yeah, it's just so similar. It's just heartbreaking. Although, uh, I will say this, and that is the, 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 the American situation might not break the same way the Yugoslav situation did uh, because America has just as many similarities with the old Soviet Union as it, as it does with old Yugoslavia. So, who knows how it will play out. But it's just these similarities are so overwhelming, and uh, I just had to talk about that a little bit. Thank you.